did you first grow curious about the paranormal? Dare you dig deeper? You are listening to Howl's Lasher. Howdy-ho, everybody. It's uh, it's me, your host, Steve Asher, and you are listening to the House of Asher. Uh, man, it's it's friggin' cold over here. Uh, Western Kentucky kind of got it. I mean, we didn't get slammed as bad as certain areas did, but uh, around here, we're used to maybe rain and a little bit of sleet. We actually got some snow, which anybody from around here knows that means snow cream, probably about 12 or 1 in the morning when it's uh, once it's uh, slacked down and, uh, and all that stuff. So the kids really enjoyed that last night. So, uh, but anyway... This is not a show about snow cream. It could be. Maybe I'll do a show about snow cream one day. But anyway, I digress. Um, as you know, I'm very involved with paranormal stuff. I've always enjoyed reading about the paranormal, researching paranormal, and uh, following really interesting people who do the same and bring sort of interesting perspectives to it. Because <clears throat> this is not a cookie cutter thing. Uh, unfortunately, sometimes it feels that way, but. There are true individuals in this game, and I am honored to have one on today. Um, I will go ahead and do a quick introduction for this lady. Uh, Dr. Rita Louise is a best-selling author, medical intuitive, motivational speaker, as well as an astrologer and psychic. She's the author of numerous books, including Stepping Out of Eden, E.T. Chronicles, What Myth and Legends Have to Say About Human Origins, Avoiding the Cosmic Tuba Four. Dark Angels, an insider's guide to ghosts, spirits, attached entities, and the power within. She has produced numbers of videos, including uh, ones uh, in video shorts. Their titles include uh, Icon, Deconstructing the Archetype of the Ancients, Holy Deception, and Ancient Aliens. There's so many more. I'm, seriously, I could do half the show in just reading these. Uh, if you want to know more about uh, Dr. Uh, Rita Louise, please check out soulhealer.com forward slash about Dr. Rita Louise. My gosh, uh, Rita, seriously, I have no idea when you actually have time to sleep or much of anything else, but welcome to the show. <laughs> well, thanks for having me, Steve. It's great being here w with you and your listeners. You know, and, and what's so great is, like I was kind of telling you offline, it's one of those things where I'm kind of the, the lighthouse uh, uh, in regards of like Western Kentucky, uh, there's not a whole lot of paranormal shows here, <clears throat> and like I said, the show touches on different things, uh, everything like I said from movie stuff, television stuff from the 80s and 90s, and just whatever, Lo folklore and whatnot. But it's uh, it's really good to have you here because, like I said, I think uh, we're all going get to an, get an education, and there's so much. I mean, I've only touched on you know the tip of what you what you've done and and all that, and um, I do want to say to everybody. Uh, you're going to have a really fun show because this lady is extremely, well, she's really funny. I, I've, I've seen her in a lot of other shows and in videos, and, and she's entertaining, very upbeat, lighthearted, and uh, a very, very positive soul. And, again, I appreciate having you on. So uh, let me ask I'm you I'm ready. This. I, I left you I'm speechless. I'm strapped in and ready to go. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Sorry, I had to get a sip of my, of my tea there. Uh, but, yeah, yeah. Uh, so... I always ask everyone, what is their, I guess I would say, Batgirl story. Uh, usually I say, what is your Batman story? You can be Batman if you want to. But um, something brought you to this. I'm, I'm sure some experience or maybe you were just naturally always intuitive. Uh, what kind of gives a little bit of a background on on uh, Little Rita. So I grew up in, and I'm going to say a sci-fi horror show family you know how, so how cool is that you know so star trek a number one um you know the prisoner one step beyond twilight zone i mean those were shows that you know we watched regularly but tied to that we were required to read a book every two weeks so our allowance wasn't based on doing chores it was based on you have to read a book and I really wasn't interested in reading like Nancy Drew or I, I don't even know what young people read or read in the day because I was interested in nonfiction and had worked my way through the archaeology and anthropology department at the library uh, by the time I was in eighth grade. And, 
and then got turned on to the whole concept of psychic abilities and well it was ESP back in the day and kind of changed my focus to that and really you know I don't want to say I haven't looked back because with the advent of the ancient alien phenomena um, it gave me the opportunity to really start looking back at ancient mysteries and archaeology and anthropology um, and so I joke around, it's like, you know, so my day job is working as a medical intuitive, which is a psychic that helps people with health concerns. I have a, uh, I'm, a, I'm a naturopath, which is a holistic physician, as well as have a PhD in natural health counseling, you know, but by night I am into anything that's just weird, you know, so whether it's going out ghost hunting, you know, and exploring the paranormal or investigating ancient mysteries and, you know, reading books on mythology, which most people would never want to pick up, uh, but I seem to really enjoy them, um, and that's kind of my life. Well, you know, it's funny, um, mine kind of mirrored a lot of that, um, you know, in regards of that kind of voracious interest in that uh, growing up, like you said again, Star Trek. Uh, you know, I, I touched a little bit more probably on like Night Gallery and Carl Kolchak. You know, the Night Stalkers. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the sci-fi mm -hmm. element was definitely there. X Files, X Files, yes. in search of all that stuff. Mm -hmm. All and, that stuff. You know, and like yourself, I would hit like our local library, the George Kinn Library, who, who's been always been so super understanding of me because here I come in here, I, I kind of was like a a less cool Pugsley Adams. And so here I come in here, this little Pugsley Adams kid, and so I'm looking around, and I don't know the library very well, and I'm, I'm probably nine, maybe nine or ten, and I'm like, okay, I, do you have anything on spontaneous combustion, the rites of exorcism, and, like, the hierarchy of demonic uh, entities? And they're like, man, what is this? So anyway, I got familiar with the 133.3 esoteric and occult section. So that was my hangout. So I was just that weird Asher kid that would come in and, and read different stuff. But, you know, it slowly started morphing from the, you know, groovy, ghouly, spooky side to a little bit more into learning more, like you said, about ESP and things of that nature and really getting in, into stuff like stones and, and different type of gems and stuff like that. So, but yeah, yeah, there's something about it. Um, my, uh, I have three kids, uh, or three kids that were in band, <clears throat> and... You know, they're like proud band nerds. I mean, that's that's how they, what they call themselves. We're band nerds. And a band nerd meets a band nerd. It doesn't matter if it's 25 years, they went to different schools, it, they're going to click on something. There's a resonance and there's a there's a familiarity there that that supersedes even languages. I've seen this in, in people who had visited from other countries that were band nerds. And it's very similar with people who are into learning about the paranormal. So you can usually tell, like, someone like yourself who's got a real ardent interest and love of it that you know then maybe somebody who's sort of okay you look good on camera here let's talk about whatever you know and mm -hmm. so it's great i dig it thank you thank sure. you you know i mean because there's always something new to learn and explore you know you follow this path but then you find out you know i mean like a million years ago i was like all into crystals and stuff and i mean i still have my crystals laying all around the house you know but you know, that was like a little detour to explore that whole process and area. And then it's kind of like, okay, you know, let's move on to this and move on to that. And I mean, it's just this never ending unfolding process. Yeah. I mean, me. it's, it's the, it's sort of the hunter gatherer aspect that we are all hardwired with, you know, um, you, you take from what you can learn in a situation and, you know, and that's not to say that maybe in a, a later version of yourself um, in regards of, I mean, obviously, you're not the same person you were when you were like 12, any more than I was the same person I was when I was 35. So, it's just like you might watch a movie and get different nuances and take mm -hmm. something away from it. So, it's sort of like that. But, but yeah, you have to. You have to kind of go out there. You don't want to get pigeonholed into one thing and, and it's, you know, it's like, you know, well, you know it all about this, but that's all you know. And that's the great part about it. You know, you want to go out there and learn. Well, and I mean, people look at my material or my biography, and it's kind of like, you know, some people think, well, she's all over the place. But it's like, not really, because I feel like all of these areas are interrelated. And 
You know, it's not that I just like read one book and go, oh, well, I'm an expert at this. I mean, it's, you know, a deep study into a subject matter to reveal as much as I can and, until I get bored and, and then move on. Um, but, uh, you know, so I can talk on a whole lot of subjects with confidence and certainty because, you know, there have been countless hours spent on investigating it. And if I don't know or I don't know a lot, then I'll just say I don't know or I don't know a lot. Well, well, let's dive into this then. Um, on the subjects of, like, attached entities, you know, it, like I said, you're such a positive person. And, I mean, everybody's got their days. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, it seems like you're such a positive person. A lot, a lot of, uh, you know, I'm doing air quotes because I'm, I'm not really a, a super – hippy dippy guy and so when I say white light you know I, I, I believe in the term it's just i not this guy of like here let me get your chakra right I'm not your chakra guy um, you know I'm more of a just a, a blue collar person uh, who just happened to have fallen into this sort of stuff of interest but um, had you ever dealt with darker parasitic entities what did you do about that how, how, did, how did that happen if you want to share that well so I mean if I got story. I mean, I ended up writing a book where half the book is just talking about attached entities. So I have a lot of I have a lot of background and experience, um, and so um, so I'll divulge here. So I had an entity attachment that I had since I was a little kid, and finally got rid of it uh, maybe about 15 years ago. Wow! And uh, you know, so it gives you a unique perspective on how they affect you, you know, and the implications of dealing with an entity attachment. Um, you know, but I did a bunch of ghost hunting and then in my private practice, it seems like, you know, I went through a very long phase. Well, all right, the phase hasn't ended yet, but a very long phase where I was getting people, you know, you attract what you're supposed to be working on. Um, of people that had attached entities, you know, of all different kinds, shapes, and forms that some were not heavily attached, others were deeply embedded into their psyches. And, um, you know, so I, you know, because I do work as an intuitive and I can see the entities around them, you know, I was able to help people and do, you know, I guess his term spirit release work um, and just have a, you know, there are a lot of people out there that have the belief that I'm having a bad day or my life isn't going the way that it should, and that must mean I have an attached entity, and that's really not the case. So part of my other mission is putting out information so that people can be more discerning, you know, because this concept of entity attachments, it's like everybody's got a freaking entity attached. I mean, it kind of makes me a little bit crazy. Uh <laughs> <laughs> with the whole thing because that's not necessarily the case. And if you sit there and go, oh, well, I have an entity attached, you probably don't. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> some of that, and excuse me, um, I think some of that you have to blame on just, uh, what, what what's the word, um, um, common knowledge or the thing of, you know, people have watched X amount of shows that, that talks about, you know, anything that's paranormal is a demon or anything is obviously because it's, it's powerful it's got to be necessarily something that's dark and um you know i'm i'm a little bit more of a dualistic person <clears throat> meaning i mean obviously i mean there's there are things that are truly evil but overall you know especially if, if it is a supposed human spirit you know and i don't even make that discern uh, discernment i just go look all i know is there's a this is what was reported to me this is what they felt experienced this is what i felt or i experienced um so i don't know but you know, I mean, imagine being in that position. You were having a normal life. Something happened. It fell apart. Now you're trying to talk to people. They want to answer you. You're going to get mad. You're going to start making some noise, try to get some attention. Uh, it could be nothing more than that. It could be maybe a person who had some sort of, um, um, I'm trying to pick the words right, some sort of impairment, <clears throat> maybe some sort of addiction in life, and, it, and that's carried over into another uh, another plane of existence. I don't know. But yeah, I, I think it's real easy now that it's just like you said, it's almost like a buzzword. Oh yeah, I've got a, I've got a attachment, or I've got a, I've got a demon, or I've got a, you know. I think, mm -hmm. I think you would know pretty quick. You know, uh, I was lucky enough that there's a gentleman named uh, uh, Robert Rigi, 
<clears throat> excuse me again, and um, around out from around the uh, Chicago Diocese area, who uh, also does uh, psychic work, and he did a lot with the priests there. And I was saying, you know, you hear a lot of people talk about possession, and they talk about this, and he's like, he said, it sounds cliche, because I'm going to say this now, but he said, um, you know, I mean, it, within five seconds of talking to these people and dealing with their auras and their and the sort of energy they're putting off, if they really have something. And sometimes, like you said, people, I don't know, I don't know if they want to, want to have, have something attached to them. I don't know, but I know I wouldn't. Hopefully I don't. Yeah, you, you know, speaking from experience, you don't. <laughs> Thank you. Don't. you. <laughs> Good. Um, but a lot of people will sit there and because they have a spirit in their house, they make the assumption that that spirit is an attached entity. So there is some vocabulary issues. And, um, you know, and my kind of knee-jerk reaction is like, well, just because you have a spirit in your house doesn't mean it's that it's a bad spirit or an evil spirit. It might be grandma coming to visit because you have a new baby, you know, right. or something, you know, I... <laughs> did an interview years ago talking about attached entities on a paranormal show and basically their viewpoint on the show was that when you die you either go to heaven or hell and anything that is non-corporeal on the earth is a demon period you'll find a lot of that here i mean and again that's that's fine that's their opinion but it, you know when you feel and see stuff <clears throat> it's like you're walking around like i don't see anything i don't hear anything i was like that's crazy talk. I mean, um, if if there's a God, and I think if he gave you your other senses, and I believe there are other senses beyond the physical, um, that's a tool. I, why would he give you that as a hindrance to trip you up? It makes no sense. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's it's uh, it's strange. Like you said, and people get locked in with the baggage maybe that they were given as a kid or whatnot, and uh, it's hard for them to shake. And, well, uh, you know, and now they have words that they can try to use to apply to what's going on with them. You know, so, I mean, I can understand, you know, in a self-exploratory mode. Um, but then they have to be also okay with you saying, eh, I'm not seeing anything. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's the thing is <clears throat> when you're dealing with someone who, uh, and again, I, I word this so I'm trying to say this because I'm trying to be not come off like a jerk you know i i work uh, me and my family are very involved with special uh, special olympics and, and special needs adoptions ourselves and i work with special needs adults during the day that's my day job so um but sometimes there's people who are going through things that may have certain uh, psychological conditions for whatever reason and you know it's just not happening or as far as we can find with our research it's not happening i've heard different people can throw out, well, maybe the people that are talking to themselves going down the street, they're really having a conversation. Maybe. But if he's also, you know, trying to pee in your purse and doing this over here, that's, I'm not thinking that's on that level. I'm thinking if it's going to be something else, it would be maybe a little bit of a higher plane something. You know, when, when, I don't want to have the guy, if I'm going to have an attachment and I'm not looking for one, you know, I want one to go, hey, you know, let's, let's be the best you can. I want a, I want a motivational entity if I have that. Uh, I haven't ever experienced that. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I'm sorry to say it. Ah, uh, well. You know, but a lot of people think that, you know, if you go to a cemetery, boom, you're going to, like, end up with an entity attachment. If you do a Ouija board, boom, you're going to end up with an entity attachment. And it's not that I'm advising people to use a Ouija board or do automatic writing, but it does set up the circumstance that, you could call something in that is going to grab onto you and not want to let go, you know, and open up vortexes <clears throat> into your space where you can't get rid of them. You know, it happens. Um, but a lot of people have this belief that, you know, they can get an entity attachment. And, you know, I like to liken it to a piece of toilet paper stuck on the bottom of your shoe, you know, like just from some casual walking through a bathroom you can end up with an entity attached and it, it doesn't work that way there are things going on inside of us that there's an agreement that happens between us and the entity they don't just clomb onto us just because we walk somewhere go into a haunted building go into a cemetery it doesn't it doesn't work that way you know and 
you know, so I try to like dispel a lot of myth around stuff, you know, and it's not to say that a spirit won't follow you home from a place, but it doesn't mean that that spirit's attached to you. It just right. means that it followed you home and it'll leave in a couple of days. Right. Well, and I think most people, and like I said, I have dealt with a lot of people who are um, Christian researchers. I've dealt with a lot of people who are, are you know, Wiccan or various, and I, again, doing air quotes, pagan, be it not tradi- maybe considered traditional uh, Christian faith. But everybody generally does either some sort of prayer, some sort of positive mantra before they go in and as they leave <clears throat> I had always done the same and only once did I ever have anything that affected you know like equipment in regards of like turning the cars were not starting and all that stuff only one time and you know I said a prayer and did some other uh, other stuff and it left us alone and I, you know and I wasn't even mad and I just said look you know you just can't come with us I don't know what's going on but you need to work it out and I, you know I've never quite understood <clears throat> the, the, the point of the whole uh, kind of come at me bro thing I think first of all that's really disrespectful um, kindness is the number one rule in that for myself and I'm, and I'm sure it is for you, mm-hmm. you because if these are entities they're sentient and they deserve a certain modicum of respect to the point up to the point where they begin overstepping on your, your spiritual rights and personal rights um, and I think that there's a whole generation of people that's followed along that kind of frat boy vibe and Mm -hmm. it's unfortunate and I think a lot of knowledge has been sidetracked due to that and it's people like yourself and like maybe me way 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 down the corner and like like aisle 12 who's trying in my own small way to, to foster a more positive love based kind of research and I know it sounds sappy but I think it's necessary. But it's true. It's true. You know, when I've had people complain about having a ghost in their house or having an entity and they're like, but it's got to go. I keep trying to kick it out. And they get so negative and so mean, I guess, you know, so angry. And I tell them it's like, that's not going to get them to go. You know, you have to send them love. You have to send them healing. I go, if I'm talking to you and I start yelling at you, get out of here, you need to go. It's like my knee-jerk reaction is going to be to dig my heels in the sand and not want to go anywhere. Exactly. And just put up a bunch of resistance. Now, with that said, I don't want to say that there aren't some spirits that are really nasty you know and I don't like using the word demon but I'll just say really nasty that you have to you know they cannot be approached with love and kindness you know and it takes a different kind of psychology to deal with and address them those are not the kind of spirits that I deal with and I just kind of refer them on to someone who is more that way you know mine is more Hey, you know, hey, ghost, what's going on? How come you're hanging around here? Well, what can we do to have you kind of move on to someplace else that's not here? Yeah. Well, you know, and that's <laughs> it's funny how you how you describe it. I can just see you walking around going, "Hey, let's talk." You know, let's let's have a Dr. Phil moment. Let's chill and, you know, whatever. But but yeah, I mean, the more like I said, the more I go and the, and the more people that I'm very blessed to meet. And that's what's so funny is that um, running across guys like you, I, I find that they're. Well, let me say this pre, as a preface. Uh, I really got disenchanted uh, in regards to like paranormal research and things like that, and because I all you saw was the, the absolutely loudest, craziest voices in media, a lot of times, and then in doing more with the radio show and doing more in my writing, I started making contacts and making very good friendships with these people that you know I'm, I'm talking you know the odds are I'll probably contact you and I'm, you're welcome to contact me I, you know, just like we were talking about Mr. Myers the other day and various other people and I'll go hey man hope your family's doing well and how's things going I know your dad had whatever and there's that commonality and that kinship and that that back and forth of care is mm-hmm. there and even if it's just like hey you don't want a thing just hoping you have a good weekend that's great and it's not like 
oh, by the way, pop, 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 here's my, all this product I'm pushing around you right now, which is fine. Everyone's, everyone's got to do what they got to do. But it's not like you're treated more as a friend and not like a donkey, not as a source of carrying whatever their agenda is. And it's kind of, it kind of has given me some, uh, some hope that maybe we're going into a new age. That we're kind of maybe getting out of that kind of greasy teenage goofiness, you know, I'm the king of the hill stuff, to everyone saying, well, look, you do you, I'm doing me, and then if we can, if our pass is crossed and we do something po positive, wonderful. And then we kind of go on and do our own thing. And, um, you know, and that's what I hope. I hope it continues doing that really badly. Well, we need that. You know, it's like, you know, and I hate to make the analogy of what's going on in France, Poland, with the yellow jackets, oh, you right. know, where they're like pulling together and going, wait, we're people, you know, and this is what we want, not what somebody out there is telling us we should want or what we should need, you know. And I feel like having relationships and having communications with people, you know, even if it's like just, hey, on Facebook, you know, is what helps to promote that, promote the general good of people on the planet, you know, because we're not just numbers. We are free men. But, there you uh, go. Sorry, a little prisoner for you. No, it's necessary. <laughs> I, was getting, I was getting ready to make a, uh, a movie reference myself. Um uh, on the um, little Nicky thing, release the good, you know. He, he's putting out the positive, you know, and you know, boom. There's bunnies and butterflies everywhere, and that's cool. And there's nothing wrong with that. You have nothing to prove. Bunny rabbits are always cool, you know, and that's that's what's great about them. There's no agenda. You got a carrot. You got you made a friend or some lettuce. But um, but yeah, there's that thing, and and I don't know, you know, I really don't know if maybe we are catching up. Or maybe getting a little bit more wiser in reading the universe, or maybe the universe is <laughs> it's probably more truthful, has dumbed it down a little bit to going like, yeah, we're going to have to kind of chop their hot dogs up for them. They're a little too small to eat this all at one time. And m maybe it's just coming at us in small enough chunks and just enough releasing of information. I mean, we could talk about, you know, uh, uh, disclosures and stuff like that as well. But I think we kind of go in like growth spurts just like we did with as children mm -hmm. it's you kind of get a, like a little of a surge and then you kind of stagnate then you get another surge and you, you're trying to absorb what you've learned and um so yeah yeah i think it's kind of for me at least my heart and my i guess you would call it intuition always called it my gut you know working in corrections for years that's i've learned to trust that and mm -hmm. um even in investigations i've learned to do that um but let me ask you let's touch a little bit more on your books you know and we were talking about uh, I believe it was Out of Eden. No, we were talking about Dark Angels, an insider's guide to ghosts, spirits, and attached entities. That's it. But what I was going to ask you about was, since we touched on the E.T., a segue, um, let's touch a little bit on that. Because I, as I understand, that touches on about that there was more than just maybe what we consider the natural flow of things. That there was some... There was a couple cooks in the, in the kitchen, putting some putting some spices. Bam, you know what I mean? <laughs> and and here we are. Boom. Um, so I've actually written two books on that topic. Uh, my earlier book was E.T. Chronicles, but it also came out as Man Made: The Chronicles of Our Extraterrestrial Gods, and so it's available under both titles. Same book, two titles. Um, and then my new book, which is Stepping Out of Eden, and so. Uh, one book, so the E.T. slash man-made book, looks at our history or the history of this planet based on the mythic record. And so it comes with the premise of if mythology is true, you know, or there's a basis in truth in there, and we start piecing together myths from around the world, what does that story tell us? And so it brings together science and theology and archaeology and, you know, all kinds of information into what I feel is a timeline timeline of the development of this planet. And so it starts, you know, at 4.5 billion years ago and comes to uh, just after the rise of humanity and the Noah flood. 
And so then the new book really looks at the human question. You know, how did we get here? How did how did we become human, which is separate from animals? And so you'll totally get my reference here, you know, since you're a Trekkie. You know, it's like, you know, if you watch like uh, Next Generation, you know, or uh, Deep Space Nine, not my favorite, but Deep Space Nine, you know, the Ferengi would always be like, you know, calling us humans, you know, but we were, are the species that have empathy, you know, and if you take a Klingon and a human, and it doesn't matter which one it is, it could be anyone from their population, a Klingon is going to act Klingon, and a human is going to act human, and a Ferengi is going to act Ferengi, and a Vulcan's going to act Vulcan, you know, so it doesn't matter who it is, it's just that is the nature of us and so that was the question I went in with is what makes humans be uniquely human because we all carry a set of thoughts and morality kind of like the Ten Commandments that you see as a consistent factor around the world and you know so the question I have was, well where did that come from where did it start and how did it develop that made us be separate from animals, you know, any animal on the planet? And so that's what that book really looks at. And it was interesting, really interesting, because, you know, sometimes I'll start exploring something and I really don't know where, <laughs> where I'm going to end up, you know, and, you know, and working, you know, doing psychic work. You know, one of the things that you learn is that you don't share with your client your agenda. You just report it. It's kind of like, well, this is what I'm seeing. You might not like what is going on in a dynamic or within that person, but you just report, you know, what you're getting. And so when I write, I tend to be more reporting versus in interjecting my opinion, which you see in a lot of. I'm going to say more contemporary writers where it's like, well, you know, this and this and this, and this is how it is. It's like, well, yeah. maybe, well, maybe mm, not. <laughs> well, uh, okay. I'll say this. And you take someone who is extremely fervent in a certain religious dogma and you set them next to a person who's maybe very, uh, very much that way and say, a, a scientific context or a para, uh, parapsychology context and depending on what you ask them they're going to answer the exact same way uh, there's a certain party line quality to it which is so unfortunate and I don't I don't know how to kind of come to grips with that in my head because um, I don't know it's just to me it's one of these things like look you do your thing your truth is your truth and I'm not saying, you know, um, I'm not saying, well, look, if the house is on fire and you think it's a great idea to go sit in it, probably don't do that. you got to have some common sense and all that and, and hold to the social contract of, like you said, of treating everybody uh, with, a, with some decency and, and, and care. But, you know, once you start becoming the authoritative voice of a certain thing, first, that, that's, that's, uh, that's bold. You know, I, first thing I always tell people on my end, I don't know anything. I have found certain things that have correlation that I believe probably are true and I have my theories if you'll ask I'll give you say well this is my theory on what a ghost is or whatever that type of energy is or what's going on and about you know alternate worlds and and all the different I mean, possibly different ages and you go through like Edgar Casey and Atlantean and earlier times and that but as of knowing it no of course not but you, then you have those guys that go oh yeah yeah this is how it is this is how it is you know don't argue it are you stupid and then you have people that's going yeah yeah you're dumb you're not you're not in the cool you're not the cool table and then it suppresses that and it either goes underground or it totally extinguishes the fire and mm -hmm. that's sort of uh that's not cool bro you know i don't like that it's um you know we've seen a whole lot of that with the uh, governments and religions and different things and it's it never ends well. Well, you know, I wrote a piece on Gobekli Tepe, which if people are interested in, actually I did a video. So it's on soulhealer.com, the video, or the, the article. And, and the article was about the burying of Gobekli Tepe. So if people are not familiar, Gobekli Tepe is a site in Turkey that was found in 2006, 
and it's these circular structures with these T-shaped monoliths in them that many of them are carved, and there's a stone circular structure, and there's multiple, you know, so it's this whole area, like a giant compound. I think it's like 16 acres. I mean, it's a big site with multiple of these circles that they're, they're still uncovering. And one of the things that they know, I'll say they know, is that the site was backfilled, that somebody came and actually filled in that location. And so that was the topic that I was addressing, um, kind of based on mythic and cultural stuff. And so the conclusion that I put out was that the reason that they buried Gobekli Tepe was because the area was considered taboo. And so in antiquity, if an item was taboo, it either could be too holy, you know, so if you are Catholic, you know, it's like you don't touch the hosts, you know what I mean? You know, because it's too holy. They can put it on your tongue. Well, now they put it in your hand. But, you know, like in the day, they would just put it on your tongue because you couldn't touch it because it was taboo. Um, you know, or something could be considered too bad, like a dead body was, you know, it had bad mojo. Um, and so my feeling was, was based on and this rule of taboo that that location was too holy. I mean, the convention has been or is, is that if there's a building and it's not being used anymore, they're going to take the stones from that building and go use it somewhere else. Right. But if the site is too holy, holy and too sacred if you reuse that stone now you're moving the it's tabooed status to somewhere else and now you have to deal with that right you know kind of like a virus yeah you're spread you're spreading the the uh, con- contaminant right and so that was the thing that i proposed and oh my god you know the youtube thing it's like rah, 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 you're an idiot we all know that it was wow. buried for future generations you know or you know there's two or three theories out there of why it was buried and i obviously don't know what i'm talking about because this is the reason it's kind of like well how do you know were they you don't. there they did don't. you help freaking bury it and it, why is my theory any less than anybody else's theory? And okay. I think mine is very cogent, personally. <laughs> okay, go back. Okay, did you ever watch SNL back in the day? Mm-hmm. Do you remember, like, ye medieval barber and stuff? It's like, mm-hmm. get the leech. He has ghosts in his blood. Thank You know, excellent, <laughs> great great cure, sir. And there you go. And, you know, bring out, the, you know, whatever. Bring out the leeches. Bring out the thumb screws. Of course, it makes sense. Everybody knows that. Don't be a dummy. You know, um, once you follow a party line... And once you fall into something just because, like you said, the crowd says it's cool. First of all, I've, there's very few crowds I ever met that was cool. Um, I'm a bit of a loner. Uh, I'm a rebel, Dottie, a loner. So I was always sort of off into my own thing. And I think part of that is I wouldn't say I'm an empath either, but I get around too many people and it super weirds me out and gives me headaches. So I pull back. So I tend to sort of be, which can be good and bad can be good and bad you can get too much you can get too too much seclusion sometimes but it was always a thing where generally you know a group of really really ardent thinking that they got it under control and they know what's best for everybody that's when mobs and stuff and book burning start happening and all kinds of other buggy boo gross uncool scenes happen so yeah, yeah, I wouldn't worry about that, and and that's the thing. I've you know I've had people kind of back and forth about certain things, and and I don't even argue with them. I just kind of go, hey, you know, you're you're entitled to your opinion, you know, like uh, <laughs> like the Big Lebowski. Is, you know, it's like your opinion, man. You know, do your thing. And I'm not saying you're wrong. I pro- possibly could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure you're not right because you're like real crazy with your reactions, you know. And and you can tell those people who are just wanting to flame up and they're looking for a fight. And I was like, man, mm-hmm. you, need, you need to get your Man, get your head together and walk in the woods for a few minutes or something. Cool out. Um, but yeah, yeah, and there's there's that division, and it seems like social media has made it so much easier because now it's you can just um, this is me like act like I'm typing. Well, you're a jerk, and, and this, this is that, and and you don't adhere to this and that, and whatever, and 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 it's so it's so funny, it's so funny because usually it's people 
arguing over things that we can't quantify beyond certain parameters of, of maybe I mean, if you want to get into like quantum physics and wow I'll start touching off and like I said in, into uh, string theory and all that but there's just uh, yeah it's weird it's like when I get into arguments with other people who like Star Trek I really liked Enterprise I really wish Enterprise had been given a little bit longer life and to catch kind of catch its legs you may not have liked Enterprise I dug yeah, it yeah I didn't care for it that much why 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 okay now this is something we need to discuss okay was it the characters? Was it the the story arc? Was it the technology seemed out of place? It shouldn't have been as advanced. Was it the Zindi? What was it? Uh, all the above. <laughs> kind of all of the above. Um, I don't know. It seemed kind of choppy, you know. And then it just didn't. You know, they were introducing technology, but it didn't seem natural. You know, mm. it, it just seemed like they were like back engineering it in time kind of thing right well you know and that's sort of people talk See, about I was, the I discovery really like thing voyager. You know? voyager, I like was voyager. voyager was good too voyager was really good i mean there was a thing and and i won't get off into this too deeply because obviously this i want to talk more <laughs> about this which actually before i go on to my tangent would you go go ahead and re-give your websites where people can reach you in regards of books and dvds and if they want to contact you about readings and whatnot Okay. I mean, so my main website is soulhealer.com, S-O-U-L-H-E-A-L-E-R.com. Um, I also I have a lot of sites, but that one will get you to pretty much everything or get you some information. It has all my books and CDs and a bunch of articles and videos and all kinds of great stuff on there. So that's a great way to start. And if you can't remember that, just type Rita Louise into any search engine and bam, I come up. Okay. Okay, tangent. Okay. Okay, like I said, I'm telling you, this is this is like radio ADHD. You just got to roll with it. Um, but what do you feel about some of the fan Star Trek stuff? Like there's one that's called uh, Star Trek Continues, like the original, like uh, the original series Star Trek Continues, and it, it has like Jim Dugan, uh, Scotty's sons in it, and stuff like that. And there's one that actually has Chekhov, uh, the guy that plays Chekhov, and he plays an admiral on another ship. And there's all these just just crazy stuff that I didn't even know was out there until I started kind of researching more and what, what do you, what's your take on that I mean because I know a lot of people's like well if it's not canon or if it's not like a CBS production directly through Star Trek we don't look at it how do you look at it or do you even or do you even get that deep I mean I, I wasn't even really aware of that um, I mean you know Star Trek is Star Trek so it's all really cool to me yeah. You know, because it just kind of continues the story through some other angle, you know, and the universe, to me, Star Trek is about the universe that they created, you know, and the world that they created. And not that there isn't any conflict, but it's how they navigate through those conflicts that kind of give me hope and humanity. You know, if we continued on the path that was set up by the original Star Trek of, you know, trying to create this world of peace, I think we'd be in a very different place. But it seems like, you know, I think that our media really programs us. And it moved from, you know, kind of happily ever after um, and conflict resolution into being, you know, we're constantly being bombarded with a lot of negativity. And it's just kind of upsetting. Well, you know, um, like you, you mainly spoke about Star Trek, not very much about Star Wars. Now, when I was a little kid, you know, like, was it like seventy six? Slow down, slow down. Well, hold on, hold on. <laughs> You're okay. getting the like the the. No, I know, I know, I'm getting an X. But what I'm saying is this: when I was a little kid, um, my, me and my brother and, and like a kid from up the street, we went to the to the theater here. We watched Star Wars, and of course, thought it was super cool. Lots of explosions and blasters and all that and it was cool and of course I like Buck Rogers and some stuff like that and Battlestar Galactica and whatnot but um, I always looked at it like this Star Wars is sort of like when you're like a kid and you're talking about like yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna join the army I'm gonna go fight people and stuff and then Star Trek is sort of like after it like you know yeah man I've been to some battles you really want peace you really that's looks neat and all but once you've been through it you it, you get kind of sick of it. You get your fill of it. You're really wanting something better for your kids. You're wanting something better for your grandkids. You know, because there's very no, there's very few places in Star Wars that's 
utopian and not touched by war or strife or something. Whereas Star Trek, a lot of the stuff that we would consider, you know, the problems that kind of keep us from doing great stuff, you know, just they fixed it. And well, uh, you know, but Star Trek, there was there was just so much more depth to the stories, you know, where Star Wars was just you know like kind of to me a lot of action. And I have to tell you that my favorite part in all of the Star Wars movies was when uh, they put the mask on Darth, when he went from Anakin to Darth Vader, you know, and he got up off the table and he just was like, no, that guy, you know, yeah, you know, and so he went from being like Anakin to James Earl Ray or James Earl Jones. It was like, yes, (laughs) after that, eh, you know. (laughs) <laughs> I don't know. You know, did you, I don't know. Well, I'll tell you this factoid. David Prowse, the guy who played the original Darth Vader, he wanted to use his voice, but he would be like, he would be very much like this. He has a very soft voice. And it would have been like having, um, oh, God, who's that guy? He's a British actor, real soft voice. Um, and, he, and, and he always does this. He st- he'll, he'll stam out of his stuff a little bit. Oh, what's his name? He's in all these, like, sappy love stories. I am terrible with names, so... Okay, me too. Anyway, does it matter? Anyway, the point is, no. it, it would have been, it been weird. It would have been like the most, you know, proper villain in the world. So, it, mm-hmm. it just didn't fly. But no. Um, yeah, well, what I liked about that is the scene that it went from where he was in the suit, they're putting the helmet on, and you see his eye, and you see, it, you see that fear and that realization that everything he knew was over. Because mm-hmm. he, he let it go too far. And he let his passions completely consume him. And to me, that was probably the most human element of that. Mm-hmm. So, but anyway, enough of Star Wars. I know you hate it, so we won't talk about it. All right, so I'm going to tell you this. So I was at uh, the supermarket one day, and this guy, I mean, there was a whole other story to it. But he had a T-shirt on that said uh, Star Wars fan, but it had an Enterprise on it. And I just, like, I'm standing in the supermarket <laughs> looking at something, and I just started to crack up. And he was like, what? I go, your shirt. <laughs> he goes, oh, you got it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's so funny, man, because like you said, I don't know. Uh, one thing that is happening that because there's so much fandom going on, you know, uh, like if you if you were like at my house, you would see anything from Trilogy of Terror stuff to Vincent Price, you know, picture sign to, you know, uh, um, a big Darth Vader to, you know, little R2 units to... Just all kinds of just a mishmash patty whack of all kinds of nutsy nerd stuff and like back in the day just like you say you had like football people and you have band people they weren't cool with each other like mm-hmm. they were on different stratas and now it's like it's okay to be a nerd it's okay to to be open to that which is gives me hope i'm really hoping that you know that keeps uh that keeps being a thing and those walls keep uh kind of keep coming down well let me ask you this like i said we we probably got about uh you know about eight minutes or so left tell me some stuff tell me do you you have some uh some uh new situations coming up some new stuff you're working on anything i don't care i don't care if it's got something to do with your garden tell me tell me about your garden tell me about anything that's wrap (laughs) so i mean one of my ongoing projects i mean this is like totally freaking unrelated is I bought a historic home that was not in very good shape. And so what I've been working on the last four years and will be working on like forever um, is working on restoring this house. You know, so it's been really pretty cool because I, I, I don't really know anything about restoring houses, you know, but I, I'm pretty ballsy, you know, so I've... Uh, you know, done a bunch of work on the inside. I get to start working on windows next. Yay. You go. Yeah, mm. I'm, not, I'm not that guy. I'm not that guy. I mean, we had had a, an, an earlier, it was probably like a 19, well, okay, I know the insert in the wall, it was like a gas insert. It was like 1916. I mean, it, it still had like, remember like where they had the gas lines that used to would come out? Like if you have like a half wall and they would have gas lights where you, you know, could see in like to the parlor and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'd had one of those before, and it was like, man, it was like so, it was like there was no insulation. It was like they might have had newspapers in the wall. I mean, it was that bad. And that's a project. I applaud you because 
you know, I was sitting there chewing my lip half the time, going, "What? What, what were we thinking?" But I, I'm, I'm glad you're up to the uh, up to the task. I mean, it's pretty fun, you know. And um, all right, so I'm going to pat myself on the back here a second. Um, so I had um, redone this one room and won first place in this old house individual room home makeover. Dude. And it was all me. All me. I had somebody put one piece of sheetrock in and then tell me this is how you do it because I had no freaking idea what I was doing. Yeah. Yeah, that's... But that's, they didn't do any of the work. I did all the work. That's freaking awesome. So, yeah. yeah. It's cool. That's you cool. know, people so, are like, God, you just, like, do too much stuff. It's like, you know... Anybody can do anything they want to. They just have to be open to doing it and be willing to do it and step up to the plate and go, okay, let me watch a YouTube video on this. I can figure it out. And then just freaking do it. Dig it. So if I'm replacing some crown molding or something, you're, you're, you're the gal to get a hold of. Okay, so one of my little flaws is I'm not a good measurer. You're probably hearing that right now. And it's the train, everybody. Woohoo! Hey, so... Maybe it'll come by my house, and then it, I could be like, "Oh, here it comes." But very well may. At least it only honks like three times. Sometimes they lay on it like I don't know what they're doing. But so let's continue with your story. I'm sorry. So, yeah, there are some things that you know I know that I'm just not good at. You know that I probably wouldn't do, and I definitely am not very strong enough to do certain things. You know, like lift a piece of sheetrock. <laughs> You're pretty funny. It's like, <laughs> you know, if it's laying on the floor, I could probably prop it up. But to like lift it up, even to put into one of those sheetrock lift things that you use, you kind of hold it up while strong. you're tacking it down at the bottom and it holds it at the top. Yeah. Yeah, yep. I'm I'm not that strong, you know. So I I recognize my limitations, but there's also a lot of stuff that I know I can do because it's just not that hard. Right. I don't think. Well, see, all right, now I'll say this on my end. Like, my father was in law enforcement. Uh, he was had been a, a cop and chief of police in this area for years. And Anyway, and he was the guy that was like, well, I didn't know much about cars. I barely knew about changing tires. And it's like, well, did your dad teach you that? I said, my dad taught me how to four-point, guys. My dad taught me how to toss a cell and, and find, you know, don't run your hands under a bed frame so you don't get your hands cut with razors. Because he was training me to be a cop when I was six. I said, what, what do I know from you know changing out this and that you know so but um but yeah it's a, there's things in life like I said, some people have an aptitude for and sometimes they don't but luckily for us you, you have an aptitude for the the spiritual and for teaching so we're pretty blessed in having that thank you but uh so let me ask you this in the last couple of minutes we've got okay. beyond your exquisite skills at working with plaster have you ever worked with plasterboard i should ask you that that's a pain plasterboard you mean like mudding and taping and stuff like that yeah well we had had they had what they called furring strips and basically mm -hmm. back in the day when there was like not much wood i guess so there was like a run on whatever and they would put furring you know like these little strips and put plaster yeah and then that plaster over it mm -hmm. i tried to put a nail in my wall and, it, and i was like what the frick my falls wall my, my walls are falling in because i'm hearing <laughs> behind it and uh, mm -hmm. once we were changing it out, we saw a furnace strip. So I just want to go on record. I'm not a fan. Well, fortunately, I mean, my house did have that. And there was a huge remodel that was done in the 40s. And so I have, like, 1940 sheetrock. Except my house is brick. It's three courses of brick on the outside. And so to hang anything on any of the external walls, it's like you have to, like, drill. And, oh, it's, my it's God. Hardcore. You it's have involved. to be very... You have to be very strategic. Precise. You know, yeah. it's like, all right, I'm going to want to hang a picture here, and if I change the picture, <laughs> it's still going to get hung here. Yeah. Eight, it, all of our, why is your pictures all like 18 inches apart? Oh, funny thing about that. Yeah, that's where the studs are at. Yeah, yeah, I've lived that life. But, you know, it's interesting because we kind of went from aliens and entities to this old paranormal house. And this is cool. This is what's it's home about. improvement hour. That's it. <laughs> with, you know, it's it's you know good for the soul and good for the uh, I don't know something that rhymes with soul that has to do with the house. I'm not good with that. So yeah, that. I, it's not working for me. It but. Ain't ha it ain't ha <laughs> you know that could be another project. You could do this old paranormal house, and you can go to old haunted houses and redo it. And as you do it, 
you can study to see if there's any paranormal activity raised by it. Oh. Well, you know, I'm sure I can like very easily find a lot of people that would be more than happy to have me come work on their houses. I mean, you know, you're doing good when I mean, because I had a contractor come in and do a bathroom because it was it needed way too it was a gut job and um you know so they were like so do you want texture on the wall like and i'm like no i want it smooth and they're like well what do you mean so i just took them into one of the other rooms that were done i'm like you know like this and they were like oh who'd you get to do that and it's like i did it and so i got three job offers for Sweet. doing mud work. that's awesome Kids, uh, i rock all right, I'm trying not to have a big head, but no, no, that's all good. No, I mean, <laughs> know your skill set, know your skill set, and and be proud of this in the time that you've learned, and just be honored that you know you've been able to retain that because that ain't me, that is mm -hmm. not me. But we're kind of getting to uh, getting to the end of what we're doing here, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to run my outro. <laughs> Which is probably very loud, and I gotta pull that back. But, Rita. Steve. <laughs> Man, I, I'm so blessed to have had you on. And uh, if you'll stick around for a second after I do this little outro, uh, I'd like to say, you know, my goodbyes and all that off there. And please, I wanna have you back on again, because I feel like we've just scratched the surface on mm -hmm. everything from the esoteric to the nerd to, uh, how to really get a good uh, a good fitting on you know tight tapers of drywall? We can do a whole section on that. Okay, sounds good to me. <laughs> okay, <laughs> well listen everybody again. Uh, uh, you know, make sure to go to check out her pages and check out get her books and get her DVDs and all that stuff. And uh, make sure to tune in again here at uh, the House of Asher and go to my page stevieasher.com and check check us out on oh good lord. TalkStream Live and SoundCloud and Spotify and all those places. But until next time, be good to each other and be good to yourselves. Enjoy the day, but as the shadows grow long, check under your bed, check in your closet. You never know, there might be uh, some boogity-boo there. But don't be afraid to be a little scared. So until next time, goodbye, everybody. <laughs>